Sports. 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 Was I early? I feel like I was early. Well, you're I'm just out coming of back. No, you're, yeah, you're, you're a little rusty coming back, coming back from uh, out of injury reserve. Uh, welcome <laughs> to another episode of Stuff About Sports presented by, of course, the Give Us a Shot Network. The starting lineup tonight is full. As you can see, we got the return of Corey. We got Bert in the building, Ty in the building, and I'm Germ. Gentlemen, good evening. What's up? What's Hello. up? Hey. So today we are less, almost a week out from NFL football and Next week, next Tuesday, we will have a special edition of Stuff About Sports where we will be doing our live fantasy draft. Uh, but before we get to that, we will actually talk because this is a weird football season. We have no preseason. The training camps have been weird. So we will talk about coronavirus's uh, effect on not only uh, fantasy football, but real football as well. Uh, we will talk a little NBA playoffs. We will talk a little NHL playoffs. And we will definitely... Uh, say our rest in peace to John, coach john thompson uh but first as uh oh and also of course the biggest thing the draft lottery for next week sorry guys the draft lottery all the teams are set uh and we will do live at the end of the show our draft lottery i have the bucket here uh but first uh, as usual the warm-up gentlemen i forgot to tell I, I don't know if you've seen this but tom brady's in tampa and i wanted to surprise ty with this shots were fired uh, from from the wife Giselle Bunchen taking shots at Bill Belichick, uh, she said that Bill Belichick was was taking any opportunity he could to shit on Tom Brady after everything Tom has done for Bill, and basically said that Bill had nothing to do with the Patriots' success. It was all Tom Brady. Uh, what are y'all thoughts on this, bro? I mean. Tom Brady had a lot to contribute with the Patriots' success, but do we forget about the year that Tom Brady was hurt and the Patriots still won 13 games? So clearly you got to give some credit where credit is due uh, to, to the, probably one of the greatest coaches to ever coach the game. Plus, have you seen him in that new Subway commercial? The guy can act as well, all right? He's almost a triple threat. If anybody can ever hear him sing one day, he might be a triple threat. Dude, as far as I'm concerned, Giselle should just stop with this. This isn't the first time her mouth has got her in trouble. And I get it. You want to stand up for your man. That's fine. But, dude, what Belichick didn't even say anything bad about Brady. It's just he was all about his new team, his new quarterback. It is what it is. Um, but, I mean, whatever. Let her, let her sound off as much as possible. Obviously, it seems like Tom really doesn't give a shit because he hasn't, you know, he hasn't said anything to her before. After they lost the Super Bowl, remember when she chirped and she was just like, oh, it can't always be up to him. You know, he was left out there to dry and – she clearly just loves standing up for her men, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, did she say that? You can't, you can't throw the ball and catch yeah, the ball? She, she, I think she yeah. tweeted that. Like, my husband can't oh, no, throw yeah. the yep. that's, yep. that's hilarious. No, she's just, I mean, come on. She just took it up for her, for her husband, man. Like, that's her superhero. That's her, that's that's it. I mean, like, she's just trying to big up, big up Tom. I mean, she has to. And um, that, that's all that's about. But nobody should, nobody should even take what she's saying. So not not to be sexist at all. Nobody should take what she's saying seriously. She's the hus that's her husband. She's got she's gonna stick up for him. There clearly was some kind of power struggle in that in that organization between those two. Cause I'm sure Brady had a direct line to, to Kraft and Kraft and Brady had a relationship even outside of Brady and Belichick. So, you know, that those those two guys are, you know, there was always a I think a little bit of a who's a real leader here kind of thing while Brady was there. But clearly it's Belichick. I mean, no, nobody should Flaunt, uh, flaunt at that or scoff at that Belichick is he's the, the sole reason I mean in reality not the sole reason he's the biggest reason and Brady was good enough to um to help with that but she's just she's just looking out for her husband man that's all she's doing uh yeah Giselle everybody knows Giselle a bunch of makes like 10 times the amount Tom Brady does so Tom Brady ain't gonna say shit she's gonna she could you know she could go out there and say you know fuck Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft and his little Asian hookers you know Fuck the Patriots. And he, Tom's not going to say anything about it. You know why? Because she's Giselle and she's hot and, you know, whatever. Uh, so uh, the probably the biggest news of the NFL this week, uh, the Jaguars surprisingly uh, gave up on Leonard Fournette after three years. I don't know what the full story is, uh, but today he actually cleared waivers. Uh, Coach Doug Marone said that they couldn't get any, like literally no picks. <laughs> Uh, nothing, nothing was offered. Like it wasn't, it was bad offers. It was literally zero offers for Leonard Fournette. Um, is this surprising to you guys? And what do you think the story is here? And, uh, if you were to t guess on a team, 
uh, who, who would Leonard Fournette be running for this year? Uh, it's not so much surprising to me. It's from a fact of, of he, he's an okay running back. He, he's kind of underperformed with what everybody's expectations have been in the last three or four years. Um, three years, I should say. Um, it's surprising that Jacksonville would let him go because who else do you have? You know what I mean? Like, you want to hold on to as many good players as, as you have. And right now, Gardner Minshew is looking around with, with nobody around him. Um, so I, I'm not surprised that no one's offered anything to Jacksonville. Of course, he cleared waivers. He's still healthy. Um, and I, I have an eerie feeling that the Dolphins are going to try to pick him up. He's got $24 million on his contract this year. Uh, or no, I think less than that. I think that's the cap space that the Dolphins have available. Um, so they have money to spend. Um, but I'm telling you now, if the Dolphins don't pick him up, then the Eagles are going to try to grab him because those are the two teams I feel like that can that can definitely use him uh, you know, to the best of, of their ability. So this shocked me, and I'll tell you why. Um, he he did underperform over the past couple of years, but you got to remember he, he is along the lines of injury prone. You know, there's not a full, I don't think there's a full healthy season over the past couple of years that he's actually played. What shocked me even more is this is their number one guy in the backfield and they didn't just cut him. They cut their him. Only got, guy. Yeah. They their got only no guy. offers, no nothing for him. So that's, that's telling that somewhere in the football community, someone knows something. It could be a toxic locker room thing. It could be something underlying that teams aren't even willing to chomp right now or even offer. Um, but with that being said, now that he cleared waivers, uh, he may find an easier home. Like Corey said, I thought potentially Philadelphia, but since they cut him so quickly and they really didn't give a reason, I'm thinking it's more of an attitude thing than anything else. And he's, he's causing trouble in the locker room. And there's no better sanctuary for troubled players to go to than the man that we were just talking about, and that's Bill Belichick. Now, do they have a use for him? No. Has that stopped Bill before from getting players? No. So, I mean, look, we'll see. Uh, but it, I think for, for me, it's definitely shocking all around. <clears throat> I would, um, yeah, first is definitely shocking. And the only thing I can think of is, um yeah i mean I'm, I'm thinking there has to be something there that we don't know about like some kind of character thing and i just don't want to believe that though like i don't i don't want to believe that i haven't heard anything so i don't want to tarnish anybody's name like i didn't hear anything bad about fernet i only heard good things about him i mean is there any has anybody heard anything speak now for hold your peace no, no i haven't nothing. heard anything you're muted jamal well, yeah, but um really can. but uh sorry yeah yeah well right. i was gonna say there are rumblings so Doug Marone, think about who runs that organization now. Tom Coughlin and Doug Marone, two guys that don't take no shit. Leonard Fournette comes in, drafted into a mess, the best player. So that off that usually speaks to entitlement, right? And then you get a new regime that comes in here, and he's like, well, this was my team before it was your team, before you were here and you were here, coach. So guess what? I'm two-time thousand-yard rusher. I'm Leonard Fournette. I'm the franchise face. I'm not going to show up to practice on time. Or I'm going to say how, talk to people anyway. I want to talk to them. Is that hold on? Wait, is that is what did that happen? Did you hear? Did you hear about that? Or no, just, no. I'm I'm just I'm I'm rationalizing. That that yes. Okay. Yeah. So, if, so we're, if, we're, we're this on agreement that yeah, nobody yeah. said anything at this point. This has nothing to character. do with. No, no. So this has I'm, nothing I don't to do with performance. It. Yeah. I'm just no. I mean, but it's, it's also nothing to do with at this point character. It, it, it's nothing to do with that at this point. But well, what else could it be? You said. I, what else? Could I, exactly. Tanking. There you go. I said it. Fine. Okay. I said I just, tanking. That's why. All right. I mean, and that's cool. That's cool. That's cool too. But I'm I'm thinking of what we've seen from Leonard Fournette. A little bit of the injury prone. Um, Doug Marone, who wants to to essentially, and he said this last year, clean up the place. He's gotten rid of a lot of defensive players over the past couple of years. He's made some questionable trades. The problem is they play in Jacksonville and nobody cares. And people seem to forget. He got rid of Jalen Ramsey for that reason. He said, "Yo, enough well, of your but, shit, bro." Yo, Jalen Ramsey is a different story, right? Like he was all over. But it's, the, he, I, I, it's, it, 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 I don't know. It could be it, Jalen Ramsey's just more public about him, you know, because he's a younger, younger guy. And and but Doug I, Marone I, I said see, that. Well, I think we we can see how he could have been a distraction with his mouth and whatnot. But he's who there's tons of cornerbacks like that. So, right. but you can see that I haven't seen that from Fournette. That's what I'm keep trying to get back to. Is like I haven't seen that from Fournette. So why why is what's happening now? Besides, you know, you're just like you know we don't we don't want to field the best I mean, team right now. 
Well, just because we have. don't see it doesn't mean just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean like Fournette just may not be that type of guy. Like he could be one of those. Like Adrian Peterson was an angel until we found out he beats the shit out of his kids until they bleed and shit like that. So we don't know who's who behind closed doors. It doesn't matter what we see. It matters what Coach Doug Marone sees. So you know, these, none of these players get the benefit of the doubt from me. Um, so guys, we're sitting here talking about. We talk a lot of football here. We talk a lot of basketball here. Not a lot of baseball, not a lot of hockey, and not a lot of uh, soccer. And that's just simply because of economics, right? They're just not largely consumer-absorbed sports, which is okay. However, that doesn't mean they ain't out here making this money because rumor has it, Lionel Messi, the, probably the biggest story in the world, uh, says, Barcelona, I'm out of here. I have this no transfer fee cause. I'm leaving the team. To put it in perspective for people, and I've gotten this explained from a buddy of mine, Steve Zuccari, who who watches the show. I think he's watching right now. That's like Jordan in the mid-90s, even though he technically retired, but that's like him saying, I want to trade. That's like, even though Tom Brady technically left, you know, at the end of his career, but that's like Tom Brady in his prime saying, I'm quitting New England Patriots. Like whoever you want to, whatever, that's like Tiger Woods saying, I'm leaving PGA and I'm going to go play in the Korean Golf League. Like that's, it's the same thing. So... The rumor has it Manchester City, one of the premier leagues in the in the sport, one of the few uh, clubs that a lot of people, even casual fans like me, know, are about to offer Messi uh, five years, eight hundred and thirty million dollars. So, um, Corey, I don't know if you can train a, a cat to play soccer. Uh, Bert, Ty, we got to train our kids to play soccer. Uh, fuck basketball. <laughs> fuck football. Fuck golf. <clears throat> fuck all these American sports. We need to get them over across the pond to play some soccer, right? Bro, I, and it's it's crazy that I, I was fortunate enough. I, I wasn't able to attend any games, but uh, a few years back, my wife and I went to Spain, and we were actually in Barcelona when Barcelona played Madrid. And then like a week later, we were in Madrid when, I guess, Barcelona went to visit them. And when I tell you that everything shuts down for a soccer game and if you're not at the game you're at a bar watching the game like that's how it is and it's not just spain it's it's over in england and manchester and, and anywhere where there's a, a bigger or premier soccer league so it doesn't surprise me that he's going to get offered that amount of money um at all to be honest with you am i still going to watch soccer absolutely not but that club is going to make that money back in ticket and jersey sales alone yeah, I think the the jersey sales initially. Um, look, it's a shit ton of money that I'll never see in my life of uh, my lifetime. At eight hundred million in five years, it blows any absurd NBA, MLG, uh, MLB, NFL, you know, definitely NHL contract out of the water. That's an absurd amount of money. And for me, um, so I mean, soccer. I, I, it's something that on TV, like unless I'm watching the Olympics, I, it's just I I can't get into it. But I will say. Uh, Real Madrid was over here a couple of years ago playing a friendly. I got free tickets, went there. It was at MetLife Stadium. And I don't think I've seen that stadium more packed. It definitely, there's a huge international global market um, for soccer. So, I mean, it's no wonder they make that kind of money. But, um, dude, that's, that's absolutely All these insane. kids left their base yeah. to go watch soccer. It was just, it was unreal, it was, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, my, I'll get my kids in the soccer Eight, if it makes that kind of money. $830 million for over five. That's $166 million a year. That's and remember, in, uh, soccer, all, all the uh, soccer contracts are guaranteed. That There's no, like, oh, like single out there just break his leg first game. Yeah, <laughs> break his yeah. leg first game and make it $30 yeah. million. Uh, I mean, apparently, Man City a, also has. There's also like a clause where, like, it's a five year contract, but after three, the final two years of that contract, he would come over to the U.S. and play MLS soccer, and still get paid by Man City. Uh, Messi would. That's what? bigger than Beckham. Yeah, I don't. Like, there's. I Is guess Man City like part of? There are they? They own any kind of MLS or have MLS stake or I'm, something? I'm sure. Or like the ownership groups might have something to do with it. You know, you know, like LeBron owns part of some of these teams and, and there's different, it's not just, it's not like these teams here. Like there's one owner. It's probably good. For a lot for, of, it's probably good for international internationally to have soccer be more popular in America. Uh, Steve's online saying teams own the image rights though. So I, I don't know. Like, 
I don't know how to, this is all preliminary. This is not happening. It's just this is what they're saying because they can, you know, like in soccer, the negotiations and, and contracts, it all works differently. A team, there's no, as far it's as I know, there's no it's like, way different out there. Different. And they, they buy players, right? They buy yeah. players from teams. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, Barcelona yeah. bought Messi. He's been with Barcelona his whole life. He's the, they bought him when he was 11. Like, <laughs> they, they bought his how, how does that even sound? Bought his rights. And when he was able to play with the adults, like at, Eight, sixteen, seventeen. He went and played, but they bought his rights. They did that to, uh, yeah, yeah. They do that. They did that. There was uh, another Brazil, Neymar. They did that to Neymar. Neymar. They uh, Brazil they bought, bought Neymar him when he was fucking nine, was like nine ten. Years old. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, he was. And he then was, when he was ready to play, they were know, like, "Yo, like we need whatever you hit. make." But they haven't even hit puberty yet. How are they going to know they're going to be a, a soccer? Who knows? Like, well, you said it. Be... You said it. The culture of soccer is different. Like, you grow up. And, and you play, but it's no, like, the thing about it, the states do that too. Like, LeBron, like, they knew LeBron was nice in junior high. They did it to Zion. These AAU teams and these boosters and these scouts get their claws into them and they follow them. Obviously, in the U.S., it's, like, illegal to, like, buy rights, but over there it ain't. And so, imagine, that would that would happen here. A, a kid like Zion Williamson, who is a beast at, like, seventh grade, some guy would dig his claws into him, but we've seen it. It happened to Reggie Bush, technically, right? Like, a, a guy bought his parents a house and they... You know, so it's so- I mean, eight hundred and thirty million in five years. I mean, to God bless you. Like everybody, play soccer, man. These these U.S. sports are trash. Um, uh, Steve says you can go pro when you're sixteen. So yeah, they could buy your rights as early as they want to, and when you're sixteen, you can go pro. Uh, Luka Doncic did that. He's playing pro basketball at fifteen over there in in in, uh, in the Balkan. So, and that's why he's the goat. Who? Uh, so <laughs> who? who? Who's that? Uh, the, I don't. The greatest, I don't see crazy in the store. Like, what's up? Oh, Puka. No. Hookah, 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 hookah. <laughs> so, all right, enough of the warm up, guys. NHL playoffs. I have absorbed a little bit of it. I ain't gonna lie. I tried. To, I I did get into it. Some of the closer games. I think Dallas and um, Colorado had a pretty close one not to, a couple days ago that I, I was really into. So, uh, give us the power play, the two minute breakdown, and your thoughts on the NHL playoffs, please. Yeah, I mean, look. Yeah. So far, what I uh, sorry, Cor, I'll jump in. What I what I picked. Yeah, uh, I mean, at least winner wise is coming true with the exception of one series I'll get into. So we have one team moving on. They, uh, the lightning beat the Bruins last night. Um, they won that series four to one. So I had lightning in six. They did it one game earlier. Um, tonight we could see another team from the East move on to if the Islanders beat the flyers. Um, and then of course the Islanders lightning will have the Eastern conference championship to see who goes to the Stanley cup The West. It's a little bit. Well, I can't say it's not even a little bit closer. So Dallas was up three to one last night. They could have eliminated the avalanche, but they dropped the ball. The Avs, I think, scored five goals in the first period and made it five nothing. I think the the end score of that ended up being like five two or five three. So Dallas put up a little bit of a fight, but they didn't end it in the five games that I predicted. Let's see if they can end it in six and move on. Now, the series I got completely wrong. That was Vegas versus the Canucks. I had the Canucks going in six. Vegas is beating the shit out of them. Uh, they have the opportunity. This is going, they're going they're to the them. conference finals. I watched so, that yeah. game. So yeah. if, if they win tonight, they'll move on to the conference finals and then um, play the winner of the Stars series. Here's what I'm calling for a Stanley Cup, though. I'm, I think we're going to see Tampa Bay Vegas at this point, um, and I'll, I'll put that to my name outright. I think even if Vegas moves forward, they'll, they'll hand it this easily um, hand the Stars. They're just, they're just playing with so much momentum. And they're, I mean, before last night's game, I mean, they were just playing amazing hockey in itself. And then the Islanders, I mean, if they move on tonight, they're going to be tough. They're going to give Tampa Bay a run for their money. But I do still think Tampa Bay is a better suited team for the longevity of the playoffs. So, You know, and it's it's a shame I haven't been on in, in over a month now because you guys would have seen that my predictions are 100% correct up until this point. Now, there's no way to dispute that or argue that otherwise, <laughs> but I'm telling you, honor system, scouts honor, 100% correct. With that being said, I couldn't tell you guys that Burt couldn't be more wrong about this. Okay, there is no way, no way that Vegas is going to make it. There's no way that Tampa Bay is even going to see the light of day for that final Stanley Cup championship. Mm. Okay, all right. Tampa Bay may have won, but I'm telling you right now that the Islanders are going to beat the Flyers. And I think it's still 0-0, but they're waiting for the dramatic, uh, you know, one nothing finish in the third period. Okay, Mm. so I think the Islanders are going off to the championship and I think we're going to take it to Dallas. I think the Dallas Stars are going to end up beating the Avalanche. They are going to steamroll Vegas. They're going to take four games from them and go right to the Stanley Cups. They said, forget it. We're normally done by now. We got the new season starting up in about two months. What we're going to do is we're going to finish it quick. We're going to finish them off and prove Burt wrong. That's what's going to happen. 
Quick update here. Islander is one nothing. Oh, the superior New York team. It's already coming true. It's already coming true. <laughs> ahead of schedule, Bert. I'm ahead of schedule. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. I can't wait to well, see what happens now that you guys have exact opposite picks from yeah. Stanley Cup. Like, I, know, I want I to see like, what happens now. I feel like there should be a bet. I have our I have our, our conference finals picks from last week. Uh the you know, I think me, Mike, and Bert and uh, Ty did did some. So we'll we'll see what happens there. I know they were talking about uh one of the Avalanche players, uh McKinnon. I think that's what got me to watch the game. He has like a crazy point streak going, like he scored thirteen points. Like so far, Nathan McKinnon, yeah, 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 and uh, he's he has like a bunch of assists, so apparently he's supposed to be dope. So, you know, I've been beast, watching man. some. Of Is he all right? Well, yeah. too bad the Flyers couldn't fucking get somebody or the or the or the Devils. I mean, jeez, what are devils. the Devils doing in these postseasons? And, oh wait, they didn't play hockey it. since March. Yeah, <laughs> God. God, yeah, hey, she, yeah, one, uh, one, two, three, Cancun. So, um. There was one more story we had. I had, and I didn't write it down. But anyway, it'll come to me. Ty, basketball now. Hey, Jimmy Butler. I know you synced it. How yeah. how, how salty are you? <laughs> um, first of all, you know why I'm a little salty. Yesterday, mm-hmm. I tried to bet on that game. I tried to bet on the Heat outright. I just was like, dog, the Heat. Maybe they might not win this series, but they're gonna win this game. I just felt it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they might win a series, honestly. But I knew I just felt they were going to win a game. I tried to bet, and like the app was like recognizing my address is not Jersey, and it was like, "Oh, you can't bet in your state." And I'm like, "Yes, I can. I bet all the time in my state." And the app was messing up, and I was pissed, especially when Heat won. I'm like, "God damn it, man!" Like, oh, so you were you were going to bet the Heat? That was my question. I was going to bet the Heat outright uh, yesterday, and the app wouldn't let me. And sure enough, they they did win, and uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, I, the Bucks are just I don't know, man. Like. Some about that. Well, we, talk, we talked about it on the other show. Like it, they they started off the bubble hot, but quickly kind of reverted back to what they had before the season shut down. Where it just Giannis is, it's, he's too tired, man. He's doing everything, and you can't play like that. That's how the Pistons beat Jordan. Um, you can't play a, a system where one guy is just literally doing everything. Um, did you so? Listen, we have th- we have a couple of game sevens, uh, the be- probably the best series in the the bubble. So we'll quickly go through them. Uh, the Nuggets and Jazz, uh, the Nuggets, Jamal Murray, man, I want the Sixers to trade for him, man. Give up, give up, whoever. That guy's nasty. Another fifty piece. Um, push now he's pushing that series is tied three three, and then the Rockets and Thunder. Uh, this is like the greatest Achilles heel for me because you have CP three, the greatest choke artist of all NBA times. <laughs> Uh, that's why I think that the the, thun- the Rockets will win, uh, even though the Rockets will n- probably get swept the next round. But as long as CP3 is on your team, you're not making it out of the second round. So what do you think about that? Uh, first of all, how do I sound right now? Do I sound okay? I, I literally just... You do it. You sound, you sound like you're like... You sound Mr. like Barry White. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just need like a shadow over you and you need to talk about something that like you're not supposed <laughs> to be talking about happening. Yeah, it's good, like, you know, no, no, remember those old like uh, those old. Remember, well, we're all of age. Remember like hard a, copy on Fox, yeah. and like yeah. they'd be like, like, the, like the guy who's snitching. You, yeah. You're the voice, except your face isn't digitized. They like did half the job on you, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> do I sound okay? Or do I sound any better or no? I no, mean, not really. No, it sounds no, fine. Yeah, it's no, no, you good. sound like no. Your no. voice is just deep like mine. It, just, it sounds good, man. I thought you took like I don't know. Well, I really, I really don't even know what you said though. Before prior to that, about CP3, what you say? Nothing, dude. The Rockets or, or Thunder? Who the battle of the choke artists? Which one oh, are you taking in the game seven? De- definitely. Damn, I got definitely the Rockets. You know, just because of Harden. I mean, he, he should have closed up the game last night. I mean, they they should have won that game, but Westbrook just you know got in the way. And um, right, right. Th- I think that would it's not going to happen again. I mean, you get to get let the ball be in Harden's hands the last minute, and you he won't fail you, and he, he's he's he can score pretty much on anybody. So I, I don't think that the the, the I'm, I mean I, I applaud the Thunder though for real for how they played man and I like I like the Thunder a lot going forward with their young squad and uh, CP3 it was a huge uh, help on those young guys man for real but yeah well, it, Alan Iverson, too much Allen Iverson actually tweeted right after that game uh, like basically saying Russell Westbrook you just choked that game away like what are you doing pass the ball for and, real uh, then he deleted it but you can't delete anything when you're famous on the internet people screenshot it it's forever. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Uh, I put a I put a uh, a poll out on on social 
uh, overwhelmingly I said, hey, you got the Lakers or you got the field, and it's like 99% Lakers think they're going to win the title. Um, I would love to see a – I would love to see a Heat Lakers finals. I would love to see Jimmy Butler versus LeBron and see how that how that would go. There's no they have so, no chance. Who the Heat? The Heat would have no chance against the Lakers. I don't know about that. So uh the last basketball topic, we do there is um some coaching vacancies and it and it got me thinking, uh, who the Sixers, there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in the Sixers uh coaching that I'm not really particularly fond of. Jason Kidd just threw in his hat. Um former um, uh, female basketball star Dawn Staley. She wants to coach the Sixers. She, if, if people remember, if you're of age, Philly used to have a WNBA team that she was the star of uh, back in the day. Um, so, so Ty, if you were a coach, would you rather coach and take your bias out of it? Would you rather coach? And let's say I give you what's the standard? Four years, five year contract for a coach, whatever. <clears throat> let's give you. Let me give you five years, and you got five years to win this title. Would you rather coach the rank them the Pelicans, the Brooklyn Nets, or the Philadelphia 76ers? Or rank them, not or don't pick, but rank, rank them. them. Yeah. Uh, bias aside, I'm mm-hmm. picking the Pelicans. I mean number one. Number one. That that I would want, I would not, and not even just because of Zion, because you've seen it even without Zion this year. The Pelicans had an, a lot of good young players. And Brand, Brandon Ingram just won most improved player, like rightfully yeah. so. 100 percent brandon ingram is is nice he was nice he was nice on the lakers i mean in reality he just was young and he's clearly gotten better so i like ingram a lot i like lonzo ball has gotten better and you know they have a lot of young a lot of young talent there i'm i'm, I'm high on a, on the pelicans and you let zion get any better and they're they're clearly um a contender um with with zion ever propelling to any because he as long as he keeps getting closer and closer to his his true potential the Pelicans are going to be a good squad with the, with the young talent they have right now. So I'm, I'm taking them first. And um, next would it'd have to be the Sixers over the Nets because of the, the talent there. Um, and obviously it could be argued, you know, them over over the Pelicans. But, you know, you've seen what the, what, the, what we've done. <laughs> and we've, we've yeah. been together for a couple of years. You have Simmons, you have Embiid, and, and, you, and there still hasn't been a lot of ton, too much noise made. Um, you know, a lot of disappointing playoff exits. So... It, it's easier, I think, to pick that younger, that younger, more potential bearing team in, in the Pelicans. And the Nets are a good squad as well. Um, they have veterans, though, and I think that's harder to coach, right? I mean, I, I guess I even kind of forgot about <laughs> Durant and, and Kyrie because they literally have are not playing. Um, yeah. They weren't playing recently, but... Man, let me, you know what? Let me let me rethink this because if I have KD, don't worry because I know the answer for both of us, buddy. Because you got it all the way wrong. The number saying, one thing you want to coach. If I have KD, is, though, that's what I'm saying. Brooklyn yeah, is the answer. Yeah, and and we're we're assuming that the rosters are what they are. Yeah. Brooklyn has Karis Car- Levert, Jared Allen, Joe Harris. That that starting five is the perfect starting five, with Kyrie and KD, Joe Harris, Karis Levert, and Jared Allen. That's the team that can win you a title, a hundred percent. I'm gonna, I'm so jealous of Brooklyn, uh, how they, how they took over the New York t- title of the best team in New York. Um, that's that's the team, and their bench is nice. The, the team, you know, it's it's a good team. I, if I was a coach, that would be the number one team, and then I would look at the Sixers. Even though they're gonna enter next season with the highest payroll in the league for the starting, it, it's a lot of money. But the talent, if I'm looking at the Pelicans, I mean, it's it's Zion, it's Brandon, and then Lonzo? You know, I mean, like, like after you get to their – after that, it's, all right, Lonzo, or is it Drew Holiday? Like, who is it? You know what I mean? Who's the guy? Uh, Josh Hart? I mean, it's – there's really not – there's a bunch of nice potential there, but there's not really a buildable – like, after Zion, who's limited, and then Brandon – who can only do so much, even though he was the most improved player, but he kind of had to be because the first half of the season, Zion wasn't even there. And, um, you know, Zion fat ass, like that's the only, like, I gotta, I gotta, we gotta the get call, fat. You know, the call Zion limited is like, is tough. I, he is, I, he is a limited I, player. I, I hear He's you. been limited all season. I like, hear you, you know, but, but what he has though, like the, 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 what he has though is so ridiculous that it's like, Oh no, I understand. It's like, understand. it's like Simmons. Like, yeah, Simmons is limited, but all the good things he does is so great. Like, Yo, yeah. man, watching Zion's ridiculous. You know it too. Like he's he's like a freak, man. He's 
you know, different than anybody, different than LeBron, different than Barkley. It's hard to compare him to anybody else the way he's the way he the way he plays. Messi, I'll compare him to Messi. Was he bought out at age eleven? No. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah, close. there we go. Yeah, there we go. Well, close. I don't know. Who knows what he's doing? We need to go check the uh, the bank statements of his mom. Really? Um, there. Oh, this was the one I wanted to actually at, mention in the warm up, and I'll get to it quickly because we're done with basketball. Uh, Oklahoma Sooners uh, opening up against Missouri State, guys, September twelfth. Uh, college football's back, but here's the caveat: it's pay per view only. Yeah, yeah, you heard that. Pay per view only. I, I know Bert knows about this. Um, what about amateurism, guys? What about what about the players? What about the students? Uh, talk. Let's talk about pay per view college football in 2020. That's crazy, right? I mean, how else do you expect colleges to make money with all their students at home currently learning through like a computer screen and and nobody charging room and board because otherwise they'd get sick or whatever, uh, you know, disease uh, is is coming up next. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just. I would. I, I guess I appreciate the honesty of it. To be honest with you, um, to be honest with you, fifty-four like ninety-nine. Time, Sorry, fifty-four ninety-nine. I wanted to look up the price. It's like a season pass or like per game? No, no, for the game, for the game, fifty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents to watch. What, the what is an what's an average boxing match on pay-per-view nowadays? It's 50, 60 bucks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. And that you're talking, you really only buy it. No one buys it for the undercards. You really buy it just for the main event. And they string you along for four hours, making you watch, you know, watch a couple of amateurs get the shit kicked out of each other. Uh, I, I'd pay 60 bucks to watch a, a – no, nah, dude, it'd have to be like a championship game. I'm not, I'm not paying 60 bucks to watch one regular season game. That's not happening. But it's, it was gonna work. It, it would work definitely for alumni, though. I mean, for students and for people that are from that school, I think that it's a way for them to get money, like you said, Corey. A way for them to make money. College is definitely alumni. Definitely, those broke ass college kids. They are not. One person is paying for pay per view, and everybody else is streaming it off of them. That's what we should do. We should buy it, and then we should send out our stream link to everybody mm, in the. We should area. charge. We should charge ten dollars. Highly illegal, but. <laughs> Our viewing. Listen, I'm I'm here for the criminality. I'm, it sounds good to me. This is this. Whole <laughs> I got a thing VPN. Fuck it. Is absolutely bonkers. There's no bigger or clearer a fact that it's just basically the NCAA in clear exploitation of this amateur talent that has been begging to be paid at least a minimum for their talents, their rights to sell their own merchandise as they should. And Corey, you said, oh, how else are colleges going to make the money? I'll tell you how else, because even without room and board, students still pay tuition. Let's say in It was a rhetorical tuition, question, Bert, but okay, we'll let you go ahead and answer. It sounded incredibly serious, so that's why. So It did. It did uh, to me too. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, I mean, let's say in-state tuition, just for for the year is we'll say 10 grand for a student you have 30,000 students at that school oh 300 million dollars for just that I mean not to mention any like sports that they would carry even just students buying their own schools merchandise I mean you go to any college campus or even when they're home I mean students are constantly repping their their school which is fine but dude to charge 56 bucks or almost 60 bucks for pay-per-view for one college football <laughs> game that's honestly insignificant it's not a championship game it's absolutely absurd and I'm I'm actually curious to see what the viewership is going to be, and I can't think of any reason as to why somebody would actually pay for that for an ex and insignificant a, you game. You can find a better rival than than those two. I mean, like you can find like a national rival where everybody would want to tune in. Michigan and Ohio State could probably that would be more of a realistic. I would say LSU Alabama would be a good one. Something too. like that, yeah. Some of the yeah. some of the long standing like whoever Notre Dame. It feels like Notre Dame's always like a big game, even though I don't think they're mm -hmm. ever really good. But for some reason every year they get like this real prime time like rollout for whoever they're playing because so. they get that's all that catholic money that's what it is that's yeah, 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 yeah. Plate money. i mean listen i'll be watching the game but i'll be watching the game just like i watch all my other games like this, the ncaa has never heard of crack streams let me tell you something i'll be watching this game for free <laughs> free 99 that's what <clears throat> boy will be watching it on and, and i got a vpn find me um, it's weird that, because like football is going to be back. So I mean, why? Like, I guess you have those hardcore college football individuals that would rather watch college over the NFL, which I personally when there's something, yeah, there's there's, there's there's people that still yeah, exist I, like that. Yeah, that I, watch I, college football only. I mean, I can Nut see if, like if, if every other sport was shut down and this was literally the only thing we had in months. 
I'd be like, okay, that's fine. I, you know, I'd pay 56 just to see something. But I mean, the fact that we've had other sports on and then that the NFL is coming back, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's crazy. Listen, let, someone... let, all right, enough, enough of this. Let the weirdos who watch college football, inferior football, that like follow it like religiously, you, just go, go pay your 60 bucks. Um, it doesn't matter because all the good players are leaving like uh, Jamar Chase, LSU wide receiver, said, screw this. I'm not catching COVID for LSU to win another title. And Ed Orgeron's weird sounding. That's who Ty sounds like. Ty sounds like Ed Orgeron right now. And um, <laughs> Bro, he's, he's, not like, far off. he's not far off. And he's like, I'm not catching COVID for you guys. So he he's a top prospect. He's, you know, he's one of the better players in the country. And he's saying, screw college. I'm going. I'm going to declare for the draft. I don't care what my grade is. I'm just going to work out for the year and, and hope for the best. Uh, do you see this as a – do you think it like this matters? Do you think this helps or hurts the students? Like, What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think it immensely helps him. I don't think he could have made a smarter move. Um, you know, it's your last year playing, and, and, you know, take the sentiment out of it. You know, like take the, the whole senior year, my last year playing college football. If you take the, the you know, the nostalgic – um, part of it out. I think that's the smartest thing for his career. He's already a top prospect. He's going to spend the years working and, and honing his craft. Um, I, I let him enter the draft. If, if that means he drops a little bit in value for draft, then, then so be it. At least he'll be 100% healthy. So, Yeah, I'm, I'm with Corey on this one. I mean, uh, especially since some conferences are being pushed to the spring, right? I mean, that why risk you know, uh, A, coming back and working out with the team and, and getting Corona and God forbid that flares up some sort of other underlying condition and then your your entire career is done or potential career is done. But I mean, shit, spend the time doing right, get get yourself a trainer, work out responsibly. Um, and then still, I mean, send your send your workout tapes to scouts, you know, send, send every, market yourself the best way you can. Um, you know, set up meetings with, you know, other players, uh, you know, in the NFL, if you can just try to network yourself and get that higher, um, higher pick. Why risk anything now? So I, I agree, man. <clears throat> yeah. And he, I'm checking his stats now. I mean, first of all, his, his, his season last year was crazy, man. Like he has 1700 plus yards, 20 touchdowns. Um, S, wow. SEC record holder last season. So he, he, he broke the SEC record for receiving yards and receiving touchdowns last year. Yeah. He, he proved himself. He he, his, he won't drop any further than he's going to be drafted probably the same, you know, this year as he would if he played or not, um, unless he gets hurt or something. Skip it. I mean, there's no reason to get hurt. Even if there was no COVID. I mean, you've seen players doing this last year. You've seen somebody do that, right? Uh, yeah. Um, towards the end of the season, there's players that don't play the last couple of games, those kind of things. Take uh -huh. take take it off. Wait for the draft. And, and especially if you're going to focus on football and train, and, and go um, work with, work out with you know NFL professionals and that kind of stuff. That's probably the better the best way to spend your time right now than than worrying about this college football crap. So speaking of coronavirus, uh, as I stated earlier, and we're probably we'll probably do this live draft after this or draft lottery after this. But um, you know, coronavirus has affected everything, including you know NFL, but probably NFL the least if we're if we're really looking at everything. NFL has been right on time with pretty much everything. And, um, you know, I think they made the wise decision of canceling the preseason uh, for games that don't count. There's no, you know, you're going to limit the risk as much as possible. It doesn't really hurt anything to cancel preseason, so fuck it. Like training camps, uh, I believe some teams have run dual training camps with other teams. I, you know, I think that's the future. I, I think we're going to see, you know, we'll see – preseason return for maybe two games next year and we'll see after that maybe they'll just eliminate it altogether who knows um but uh obviously there's been been some questions about fantasy drafting during covid like what do you do what's the strategy not to ask anybody their strategies here before our draft next week but how have you guys been absorbing it's been different for me studying and trying to figure out how the hell i'm going to draft who to draft uh how are you guys approaching your um, fantasy draft prep. Uh, I I love it. I, you take all the dramatics away from what you see in um, you know a media heavy training camp or even the preseason. It's you're, you're it's black and white. It's all data driven. You know the guys on the roster. You know what their numbers have been in years past. You know who makes up the team and what they're projected to do. And that's it. You don't have to worry about like uh in the second preseason game he dropped the you know he fumbled the ball. He's got ball security issues. This that like you don't have to overthink it, man. You just know 
who you want to pick at, at what stage. Um, I, I don't want to give myself a lot of credit because I'm a very humble person, but I by far have the best draft strategy anybody's ever seen. Um, I will take this league um, and I will regain the championship, even though I've never actually won the championship in this league, but it'll be mine for the taking. All right. I'm just telling you right now, I just feel like, you know, 2020 has been such a good year so far. I feel like the next thing to happen is for me to really get that championship out. So this is it. This is my year. You guys can just, I don't even know if you want to say your piece about the subject because I don't really think it matters, but it, it, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, I'm actually the complete opposite. I'm, I like, the preseason games, I like being able to see uh, new quarterbacks, new coaches, new offenses, new defenses, see if they're gelling, see if there's some sloppiness to it. Plus, on the other end, of, uh, or on another argument is, you know, you have teams that guys are competing for starting jobs, especially new guys, you know, or someone with an all new backfield or rookies that just came out of the draft, you know, that they're talking them up that could potentially be the number one guy, but we won't get to see that until a couple weeks into the regular season. So for me, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of reading about the reports of what's happening in practice and how the teams feel and the general manager is coming out and saying, you know, you pissed uh, him off, he's done. But, um, you know, what, you know, who could potentially come out of it? But I mean, for without seeing them actually play, I mean, it is causing me to now overthink, you know, like how, how much am I willing to draft, um, you know, like a long shot in an earlier round to see if it'll pay off without actually seeing nice, <laughs> nice without actually seeing them play in itself. So, I mean, that's me. I'm, I'm, my draft strategy is honestly just going to read as much as possible and, and just, you know, pick and pray essentially but my god was my turn oh yeah oh yeah so um the champ the champ is here so i might not win it last season but i went two seasons ago god damn it and i'm <laughs> i'm gonna win it again and i'm not really worried about it but i i do i do like the, the preseason you know because you get to see the rookies you get to see the, the second and third stringers. Hold on, Ty. I'm sorry. Because your voice, I want you to I want you to listen to the playback. I, uh, we're 47 minutes in. Visually and and just the sonically, it's hilarious. <laughs> keep talking. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So back to the preseason. I'm 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 gonna miss the preseason and I hope the coronavirus doesn't mess up the the season too much because I can't I can't have any hiccups this season. I gotta have a clean stroll into the winner's circle. But I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna pretty much draft like I'm gonna draft I'm saying it right now I'm drafting Brady. Like I'm gonna get, get him early. So don't worry about it. I'm drafting everybody way too early. I'm getting Brady, I'm getting Gronk. Um hopefully I can get you know Evans or Godwin. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that all the way to the championship. I'm telling you guys the beans right now I'm gonna have the best strategy. Um, changing a team name, or you're about to do the, the 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 picking the names up the hat. If you want to change my team name to the Brady Bucks, you can go ahead and do that. That is okay. that is the new name. We are the Brady Bucks, okay. and um, yeah, I'm excited for fantasy football this season. I'm excited to win another championship. It's not the bunch and bucks. <laughs> I feel like G Giselle runs that team now, right? Or the oh, uh, no. or the broke or the broke back bucks. Um, so mm -hmm. the. I am the least prepared for fantasy than I've ever been in my life. I have no, I, I have no idea how I'm going to draft. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's exciting, but it's also terrifying because it's like, fuck man. Like I've, and I'm already a bad tinker with my team. Like if I lose in week one, I'm trading half my team. And so I'm scared that if I draft wrong and I really lose that I might as well just just ghost my entire season at the at, at the end of it. Um, I'm terrified of uh, the one thing I do like about preseason. It it, it's, it serves as as a warm up. I'm terrified for the first four games of this season. All the injuries we're going to see, um, people people being rusty and, and things like that. I'm just and I know everybody who's going to tear their ACLs and be out for the season are going to end up on my team. So uh, I'm I'm just scared about all that. So. Yeah, it's it's weird just to prep. I don't think anybody truly knows. You know, you see all these experts whose jobs it is to scout these things. It's like, how can you possibly do it with like, how could you read it, read any of it with any confidence? Because there's nothing to watch. There's nothing to see. Like anybody can look good when the when it's like shorts and, and, and helmets and, and everybody looks good. Like it's just we'll see what happens. I, I think I think this is going to be I don't think coronavirus is going to stop the NFL. It's just too 
It hasn't stopped it yet. I don't see it. But it can, it, it can, it can, it can mess up fantasy football, man. Let, let you know, let a star player miss or something like that's going to be. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what you have to be careful of, right? Like especially you're drafting from them floor, like the Bucks, right? Like you're drafting from one of them Florida teams where where it's popping. I'd be interested to see if they're going to let any of the Florida teams actually play in Florida for a while. Um, but you know, we'll see. All right, I mean, look, well, yeah, all right, all right. You guys are begging. You're begging for draft t- tips already. I, mm-hmm. all right, I'll, I'll give you one little small one. Okay, and this okay. one, this why we need everybody to listen. All right, it's it's pivotal that you do not draft any player from Buffalo this year. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna give you. That's all I'm gonna give you. Uh, and you know what's okay, funny? Josh, um, yeah. Yeah, Miami's never gonna. Miami doesn't have any draftable players. Never. They, they don't have a receiver. They don't have a quarterback. Who's who's draftable in Miami? Go ahead, give it to me. Who is it? Ryan exactly. Fitzpatrick. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't even do it. All right. Without further ado, <laughs> look at him. Still thinking. Without further ado, guys, I had to bust out the special bucket, the bucket of life, the bucket of fantasy uh, draft excellence. It's a very special bucket that I that I got specially for this show. Made it, got it for this show, and here it is. <laughs> now, all 12 teams are represented. I gave it a nice, good shake. Everybody's name's represented. Uh, wait, this is 12 through 1, right? So the 12th pick in the Give Us a Shot fantasy draft is Ricky. Somebody write this down for me, please. I'm sorry. I'm not going to remember. <laughs> sorry. All right, I guess I can... I, yeah, I can listen. All right, here we go. Hold on. I'll, I'll write it down. I'll write it down. Thank you. Thank you. Put in the group chat. Right. Yeah, put in the group chat. The 11th pick. The 11th pick is going to damn germ me. Mm. Shitty. All right. That's not terrible. If you, it's snakes, right? So it'll yes. be good. Yeah. And I'm drafting the entire Buffalo Bills team. So they'll all be all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Listen, I'm a nice guy. So I'll give you another tip. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can feel gotcha. it. Thanks. You want to try your hardest, and this is important, mm-hmm. not to be the 11th pick in the draft. Yeah. It's just not, <laughs> yeah. A, good it's just not a good – there's nothing you can do there. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeremy. Go. The 10th pick in the draft will go to friend of the show, Josh. Josh okay. Perez. All right, Latino Heat. Josh, I, I just like – all I picture is Josh just smi- – like I've never seen the kid not smile before. He's like the happiest kid He's ever. Happy. He's probably yeah. so, so pumped to have the 10th pick. He's just like, man, 10? All right, I can do 10. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, Mikey P, Mike Powers. Mm. All right. He's so not far, like so that. good. You know, he's not going to like that. Yeah, these are spots I don't want to hear Dude, my name. Mike, yeah. Mike is German. Mike is German. He loves nine. That's all. Yeah, He's yeah. nine no, all day. Nine, nine, nine. nine. <laughs> The eighth pick in the Give Us a Shot Fantasy Football League. Other friend of the show, Big Jermaine, Big Papa. He's a really nice guy for all those who had the pleasure to work and meet him. All right. What number was that? What was he? Eight? Seven? Eight. Pick eight. number seven. Pick number seven. Lucky number seven goes to friend of the show, Ray Kentz. Lock, stock, uh-huh. and loaded. Feeling good. Uh oh. This is listen. This is the middle of the pack right here. I know. Number six. Bert. <sighs> hey, I'm feeling good. Let's go. Top, Get five, top five. Top five. Uh, breaking news alert. Score alert. The Boston Celtics just got the Toronto Raptors defending champs the fuck up out of here. They lead the series 2 0. Mm. Uh, they beat them 102 to 99. All right. So. Number five. And the Nuggets and Jazz just started. Nuggets are up 17-11. Number five, Yella Mandela, tie. Okay. All right. Not, not too mad. Not too mad at that. Number four, fo fo fo. Hopefully Brady lasts to there. Friend of the sh- show, uh, Slaps Donut House out in Jersey. You want some really good homemade custom donuts? LJ, Lawrence, he's a really good de- dude. Uh, he's going to hook us up with some donuts when I get out there. So it's going to be really nice. All right. Number three. Oh, how the hell did she get in here? Lauren Ty's property. <laughs> number three. All right. Oh, let's no. see. Yo, that means this kid up here in the top right hand corner has number one. This is you ridiculous. Pull him out number one. I'm going to, I'm going to smash my screen. I'm telling you, I'm calling right. it, man. This is my year. Up. 
Shake it up you got, in the you magic. Got a cat bucket. I think it's biased. I think the second you put it in a cat right. bucket, this kid was going to You know how they go to commercial during the NBA draft lot and the NFL draft lottery? So that's how they build up the suspense and the drama. I, I want to throw something out to you guys. And I'm not really throwing it out to you because we're going to do it. Uh, during the football season, on top of the fantasy draft, and I only spoke about this with, with – oh, I didn't speak about this with any of you, but we're going to do it. <laughs> the this is not only the draft lottery bucket, but it will also serve as the bucket of death where I will be purchasing helmets, well, logos of every NFL team. And every week on the show, I will be picking said for each of us. Mm -hmm. If that team loses, you, and you'll get a chance to either keep the team or you'll get to re get a repick. But if you lose, you will have to do a humiliation on that show. Uh, we will. You'll get to pick the uh, the other guys. Will get to vote and pick that humiliation. Whether that's wear makeup on the show for the next show, paint your face blue for the next show, take a humiliating picture and post it on social, whatever it is. So, something for the fans. We got to do it for the fans, man. All right, sorry yeah, guys. Throw it out to a vote. I, I, I like that. I like All that. right. We'll we'll iron out the details later, but I think it'll be a really good thing. All right. Without further ado, the number two pick in the Give Us a Shot Network Fantasy League. I have it in my hands, guys. It's in my hands. That pick goes to fucking Chucky Gookins from Fresh New Angle, which means the number one pick. <laughs> he took off of work for the last month and a half. We didn't see his face. And that man is cool cat Corey. We take it. I mean, listen, we take like this move. We take it. Oh, no. I'm not really. I'm not revealing that yet. All right. You can't right. take it. We can't steal it from you. So fuck. He's like, gonna no, take Fournette. I'm, doing it. I'm not. Fournette. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Leonard Fournette. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> Tua Tunga Vailoa. <laughs> oh man, this is. So there you uh, have it. That was that was the draft lottery. Uh, Corey has that. We'll we'll get that in there. Um, that's unbelievable that Corey got the number one pick. It's it's almost. I almost want to just do it over and not do the draft anymore. <laughs> I second that. Hey. Hey guys, listen. I'm I'm calling it all. All right, Bert. I I know your predictions are about the NHL are wrong. Just you know, write it down, play some bets. I can help you out. All right. I'm telling you. Whoa, I'm telling you right bro. now. This how is how we're gonna mute, do it. Can you mute this man? How do how do you do that? We got we got to try. We got to try. You can't do this. So, this isn't Zoom, Bert. You can't mute me. Oh, God, <laughs> damn. Well, that was it, man. I don't know if there's anything else, you guys. That was my list. Uh, I think we talked about everything. We got we got done in an hour. Is uh. Is there anything else uh, sports related that you guys wanted to? Oh, duh. Rest in peace to coach legend John Thompson. Uh, coached four Hall of Famers. He scouted four Hall of Famers. Uh, Dikembe Mutombo, Alonzo Mourning, Allen Iverson. Uh, who am I Patrick. forgetting, Ty? Patrick Ewing, sorry. Georgetown legends. Um, uh, John Thompson. Uh, do your Googles on him and you'll see how great he was. Uh, the only thing I'll tell you on this show is that he called Baltimore's number one drug dealer kingpin and told him to leave Alonzo Mourning alone. And that was that. And so that's all you need to know about John Thompson and, and the type of man he was. Great uh, so rest in peace. Really good dude. Uh, obviously. And Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I 42. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll tie sports into that. We don't really need to, but uh, Chadwick Boseman, uh, True superhero. Obviously, a lot of people know him uh, from Black Panther, but he played um, Jackie Robinson in the movie 42 that I just rewatched yesterday. And it was a fantastic movie. And I'm not saying that because he he passed recently uh, from stage four uh, colon cancer that he's actually been had stage three all the way back in 2016. So that means everything you've seen him in from 2016 until, you know, until he died, uh, he, he was he had cancer. So. You know, I mean, yeah. amazing. What's your, what's your excuse? God damn it. Get what is, your thank you. That's, that's the lesson you learn. For if you're real, not going to read up one. A, a beast. For real, you look back yeah. at that like, man, for you did all that. Yeah. What, Never I have complained no about it. Nobody knew about it. He just went, did his job and did it, did as much good in the world as he could uh, while he could. And so shout out to him. Shout out to John Thompson. Shout out to anybody we've lost this year, obviously. Uh, Nipsey Hussle, Kobe Bryant, Gianna, all these, all these great people. Uh, 2020 sucks. And it's going to keep sucking for the foreseeable future. So all we can do is be nice to each other and take care of each other. And I uh, hope Corey fouls up his number one pick in the fantasy draft. Not happening. Not happening, bro. <laughs> we got this next week. Next week. Draft next day. week. Join us next week for special edition. We will, because, you know, fantasy drafts run a little long. We will start at 7 p.m. 
Uh, all of us will be here live. We will probably uh, do this on Zoom so we can get some of the other participants uh, in the window if, if we can. Um, if you want to join us, please do. It's a great time. We'll laugh, we'll joke, we'll have fun, and we will draft. Uh, until then, uh, for Corey, for Bert, for Ty, I'm Germ. Everybody, good night. All right, I, I have music queued. Say, say good night one more time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for everybody that you see on this screen, give us a shot, network. Good night. Sports. Sports.